All right, this video is dedicated to landforms for use by the Colorado Natural Heritage Program and the USFS Rocky Mountain region and was created specifically for the Native Plant Materials Program. So let's jump right into it. What is a landform? The definition we'll be using this year comes from the Seeds of Success Technical Protocol, which describes them as a description of local topography, such as a mountain, a hill, an alluvial fan, a flat, and so forth. Another definition I think is helpful to have on hand comes from Wikipedia, which describes them as a natural or anthropogenic land feature on a solid surface such as the earth or another planetary body. Landforms together make up a given terrain and their arrangement in a landscape is known as topography. So the native plant materials program will use them specifically to describe a landscape of a collection site and also for the national vegetation classification system that you'll do at the end of your field season. So there are four major landforms that I'm sure you all have heard of before, the first of which being mountains, which are usually the tallest landform in the landscape and often form those sharp peaks as you've seen. These are created by tectonic plate and volcanic activity. There's also the plains, which stand in stark contrast to those mountains, as they are a large area of flat to gently sloping lands, and this is formed by sediment wash buildup over a long period of time from taller landforms. There's also plateaus, which is elevated land with a flat top and is formed when two tectonic plates collide, which causes a really slow upward movement. Finally, there's hills, which is elevated land with lower and less steep summits compared to mountains, but is also formed by tectonic plate movement. And I should mention that all of these pictures come from the USFS Rocky Mountain region, where you'll be working this summer. So I'm going to describe some landform classification now, and landforms are categorized based on their physical attributes, for which there are many. Um, some examples that we'll be using this year include geology and soils. So the parent material is crucial to the formation and evolution of landforms, and that soil type and texture from the parent material will help provide clues as to what type of rock might be underlying a land feature. This picture is pulled directly from your geology layer of the collection map and can be used as a clue to help understand what type of landform you're looking at and how it was formed. Next is the creating processes, and these can help determine the size, shape, and location of a given landform. There's also slope, which is the measurement of steepness, which influences the intensity of creationary processes and is often used to describe landforms. Elevation, for our purposes, will be the measurement of height above sea level, and it is one of the elements used in a topographic map to depict different landforms. Finally, there's also shape, which is that actual shape of a landform, both on the ground and on a topographic map, and can help you limit the possibilities of what type of landform you might be looking at. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the geology and soils. One important concept is differential erosion, and that's just the idea that different rocks erode at different rates, with harder rocks being more stable, such as metagray whack, and softer rocks, such as sandstone, being more susceptible to factors such as erosion. Geological structures are also important, and this includes faults, folds, and joints. Uh, one example is that faults can help form escarpments as the rock separates and creates a steep slope. Soil type and texture can help indicate the underlying parent material you might be looking at, and this also helps influence the stability of slopes. I encourage you to explore the geology layer within field maps so that you can try and match a landform to its parent material. And you can do that under the low lith feature in the attribute table of this layer. So now let's talk about the forces that create landforms. And it's important to remember that there's usually more than one at play in any given landform. So some of these include tectonic plate movement, as pictured below here in this rift valley as two plates diverge from each other, volcanic activity, which can create things such as the inactive volcano pictured here, aeolian or wind forces, such as a sand hill, cryogenic or freezing processes, which can create things such as block fields, erosion and weathering general, which can create things such as the buttes, fluvial or water action, which can create canyons such as the Great Canyon, 
and also glacial processes, which can create things such as this coal, which to note is the lowest point between two peaks. Now I'm going to talk about slope, elevation, and shape all at once as they often work together in landforms and are all often referenced in those landform descriptions. Each of them are important elements of a topographic map, as you probably know. So the closest of lines indicate steepness of a peak, the number of markings indicate the elevation that you're at, and then the shape of those lines indicate the shape of the landform. So you can see this picture below of what the landform looks like in person versus on a topographic map and how they align with each other with that slope, elevation, and shape. Now I'm going to provide a few examples of landforms that you might see in your field season. So I'm going to start with highlands. Um, each of these definitions is going to come from the Seeds of Success Landform Dictionary. And this is described as a large area of elevated or mountainous land standing predominantly above adjacent low areas, a mountainous region. So this is a general description for mountainous landforms, and it's usually high elevation and generally has a steep slope. So pictured below is Carter Mountain, which you can see stands in stark contrast to the lowland below it. And then I've also circled what highlands would look like on the Pike National Forest there. There are also foothills, which is described as a region of relatively low rounded hills at the base of or fringing a mountain range. And this is the transition zone between plains and other lowlands and the adjacent higher mountains or uplands, which we see a lot of here on the front range of Colorado. This has elements of both low elevation plains and mountainous topography, but has little extremes on either end. Okay, so now I just want you guys to do a little exercise practicing what a landform looks like and go ahead and try and figure out what part of these pictures depict the foothills. So starting with the one on the left, the very top flat part of that landform is the plateau. Below the plateau, those rocky and steep cliffs is called an escarpment. In the foreground next to the water, we might call that a lowland or a floodplain. And then in between that high and low point is where the foothills are. Okay, and moving to the right, you can see the very bottom piece of land there is a valley in between two hillsides or mountainous regions. Kind of gave that one away. The far background with those steep points is highlands. And then in between them is the foothills. So the next example I'm going to give is a gulch, which is a narrow, deep ravine with steep sides that's larger than a gully. And when you're on the ground, what you're going to be looking for is a steep slope with a V shape or a sudden drop in the landscape with a small stream or dry creek bed running through it. And this is caused by erosion of loose soils and flooding, which leads to disturbance of the landscape and means that the species composition is mostly made up of weedy generalists and those workhorse species. Okay, and finally, I want you guys to just go ahead and go through the classifications that we went through in major landforms and go ahead and try and figure out what this landform is on your own. All right, and if you said a mesa or a plateau, you'd be correct. So this is the North Table Mesa in Golden, Colorado, and we know that because it has those really steep slopes, obvious on the topographic map, with that really flat top. You can see that in both the imagery as well as the topographic map. All right, so that's all I had for you. Here are some additional resources linked in the PowerPoint, and I hope you learned a little bit more about landforms.